Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without any more delay, let's get started, shall we? Father God in heaven, Father in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, God, for another day, Lord. I thank you, God, that you gave me rest last night, Lord God. You know, I thought I wasn't going to get any rest. You know, I woke up several times, Lord God, you still uh, allow me to be well rested this morning. Energized, revitalized, rejuvenated, replenished. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for, uh, for this technology, Lord, that I may reach someone, Lord God. That someone may hear something that they need this morning, Lord God. That someone may hear a word, Lord God, that 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 changes how they feel, Lord God. Thank you for your word for myself as well, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your word gives me hope. It gives me direction. It gives me strength. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit who helps us in all things. Now, God, I pray this morning that you would speak so your people can hear you, Lord. I pray, God, that we would receive what you're saying to us, Lord, joyously and willingly and obediently. I pray, God, we use this for edification of our lives and the lives of your people. I pray we use it to glorify you, and I pray we use it to win souls for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, today's scripture is coming from John chapter 17. We're going to do verses 14 through 20. This is Jesus praying to the Father. John chapter 17, verse 14 through 20. Make this big so I can see it. <clears throat>
I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. <clears throat> See, now this Jesus right here praying to the Father. Um, and uh, you see that he's he's uh he's praying for his disciples. I didn't put out I didn't I didn't do a lot of that, that whole John chapter 17 that Jesus is praying. And um he pray I think he prayed for himself, he prayed for his disciples, then he prayed for the, the disciples of the disciples. He those who were well, those who are gonna be Jesus' disciples after the disciples, those who are gonna hear the word of the Lord and believe later on, those who did not have an opportunity to see Jesus or witness what he was doing, but later on would still come to believe in him. He praying for all three, for himself, for the disciples, and for us as well. And, and um, it's a lot going on in John chapter 17. He did say something. He said, none of them is lost except the, none of them is lost or destroyed except the son of perdition or the son of destruction. When he's talking about Judas, and that's so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So it ain't like Judas was uh, saved he became unsaved. He was lost. <laughs> he was always lost. You know what I'm saying? It was, the scripture said he would be lost. If Jesus said, if Jesus said that Judas had to uh, be destroyed, be lost, hey, it was for, <clears throat> it was foreordained. It was preordained or predestined a long time ago. When Jesus prayed, he knew that we would have to remain in the world until our purpose is fulfilled in this life. He knew it. Um, he knew that we would be surrounded by all manner of sin and ungodliness for our entire duration. I'm going to tell you, one thing I can assure you of is that there's going to be sin in this life until you go and see Jesus. Now, that's the one thing. Now, whether you go, whether you die and go and see him, or whether you, you know, or, or he come back and you go see him until we go, till we go see him. Not you, but not not me, but we. Until we see Jesus Christ, and we see him bust through the cloud, coming, seeing is about to be ended. If we go in death and see him, seeing is about to be ended. Either way, that road right there to Jesus is the end of sin. And ungodliness and transgression and all that. But, however, we must deal with it while we're here, though. See? We got to deal with it while we're here. Um, otherwise, Jesus could have just asked the Father to remove his disciples from the world after they were saved by his grace. You see, he said, I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but, they, that, you, but th that you should keep them from the evil one. That's what Jesus said. We must endure. Jesus prayed that we would not be defeated by the evil one. The father does not deny the son's request. So, therefore, we are not defeated if we are in Christ Jesus. He says, keep them from the evil one. You go, you, so don't let the evil one take control of you. Oh man, don't let he pray that the evil one don't take control of you, does not defeat you, does not get the upper hand on you, don't don't put you under his foot, don't trick you, don't deceive you, don't you know what I'm saying? I, none of those things. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not defeated by the enemy, by the evil one. Um, now look at this. It might seem like we have lost, but we have victory. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse seven. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be unto God, 
who has given us the victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. God has given us the victory through Jesus Christ. It might look like you are defeated or we're defeated, but we have victory. It might look like we lost, but we have victory. There's going to be a lot of battles. Now, keep in mind, it's spiritual war. There might be some, some small fights, even some big fights, some big battles and small battles. And you win some, you lose some. You win some, you lose some. You do? I ain't gonna touch that cord. You win some, you lose some. But I read the end of the book and we win. We win the war. Goodness wins. Evil loses. Goodness wins. Good wins. Evil loses. If you read the whole book, read the end of the book. So that's that's the hope we can have. It might look like uh, we have reached a dead end at times. You ever uh, going and going and going? And some and I and I know I, I know I'd be going and I, and I and I could I, I could stop and then pick up another time by say man I'm just gonna keep pushing until I'm finished with this and then I'll be done with it then I can rest and relax you know what I'm saying I go I I I will go on fumes for a while I'll just be pushing and pushing and pushing and I'll just I, if I see the end in sight if I see the the if I see the goal. I'll just push on to the end, push on towards the goal on fumes, you know, just on whatever little, whatever little power I have left. Because once I reach the goal, then that's it. I can chill, I can rest, I can relax, I can feel like I've accomplished something. I can feel accomplished. And so, it, but sometimes we we go in and it, and we we uh we just reach a dead maybe like we reach a dead end, and there's no we we've been we've been pushing in the dark and. Pushing through the maze, pushing this way and going and walking and running. Then we then we get up and we make all these turns and get the boom. Wow. Dead end. What do I do now? Turn around and go back. Do I turn around and go back? And I've, I've come so far. No. It might look like there's a dead end, but the Lord Jesus makes a way. So he makes a way. He makes a way when um when we're caught up in our mess. When we're in a when we're in a bind and we and we need to be saved, when we're about to be destroyed, he makes a way then. But he also makes a way when we're when 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 it's not such a such a uh, a, a dangerous or threatening or harmful situation as well. It could just be something that we're trying to do, a goal we're trying to accomplish, a uh, uh, a place we're trying to reach, a destination we're trying to get to, uh, a step that we're trying to take. So I, I, that's the, an obstacle we're just trying to overcome, and it may seem like we we were making some progress and we reached a dead end. But the Lord makes a way. You see, Jesus is here, is here praying for us. Jesus prayed for you. He prayed for you. He prayed for me. He prayed for them. He's praying. He prayed for us. And right now, He's still right now at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. He's right now at the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession for us, praying for us still. And so, and so uh, I think it's good that we pray for each other as well. Jesus praying for us. We ought to pray for each other. Be more like Jesus, praying for each other, praying for himself, praying for those around him, and praying for those who are going to come behind him. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I don't think I got the box. Oh, that lamp didn't have no box. I'm talking about that lamp again. I'm I'm going I'm gonna remember to take that lamp and switch it out. <laughs> if the Lord will. Um and so Jesus is praying for himself and for 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 them and for us as well. And even though it might seem like we reach a dead end, he makes a way. It might look like we are failing. I know it looked like that oftentimes with me. It looked like I'm failing. I like I, I tell the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm failing, man. Or I'm struggling, God. Struggling to hold on. Or failing in what I'm trying to do. Not all the time do we uh do we do the right things. We might we might we might we might have we might even have the right reasons for what we're doing, but it might not be the right things. See now, we can I see people I love. We can be doing something in the name of love, or because we feel like it's right, but it might be biblically wrong though. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, 
we can be doing some that we that, that's biblically right, but we're doing it for the wrong reasons. See, you can be doing the 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 wrong thing for the right reasons, and you can be doing the right things, but for the wrong reasons. Both ways work, and so quite often we uh get get to going and we don't um ask the Lord on what to do. Quite often. We quite often, everybody, we go, we don't, we don't, we don't seek the Lord first in something. And then we get down the road and start asking, what am I doing wrong? Or why, you know what I'm saying? Because we didn't seek God first. But, but when we're doing something for the Lord, we feel like he told us to do it. And it seems like we're not prospering. And we, we, we seem like we're failing, failing in what the Lord sent us to do. And I oftentimes feel like I'm failing in things. And it might seem like we're failing, but God works all things together for the good of, of us because we love him and because we are called according to his purpose. Um, you know, um, we, I, I think the overall goal is, is, is winning souls and glorifying God, you know what I'm saying? Glorifying God and winning souls, which is still glorifying God. I think that's the overall goal to be saved and for people to get saved and to glorify God. And uh, but I think there are also other things that we do that lead to that, that lead people to being saved and lead people to glorifying God. And so there's a lot of different ways we can fail. Uh, I, uh, there's a lot of different ways we can feel like we fail. And don't get me wrong now. Don't let somebody tell you that you haven't failed because you can fail. Failure can take place. You know what I'm saying? You can fail sometimes. Don't let somebody tell you, man, uh, no, you didn't fail. You did this because you know what God told you to do and you know what, what you are trying to do. You can fail. If, if you need a, if you need a, um, if you need a 70, if you need an 80, if you need an 80, an 89 to, to get the credit for the class and you make a 88 and they say, man, you didn't fail. You did great. That's not the truth. You failed. <laughs> you didn't do, you, you failed. You could have did great, but you still failed. If you needed an 89 to pass the, on your test to pass the course and you made an 88 on your test, you failed. The mission was to pass with 89 and pass the course. You failed passing the course. You failed to get the 89. And so does that mean it's the end of your life? No. Doesn't mean it's the end of your life, but that also doesn't mean that you didn't fail. You just got to try again. So when it seems like we failed at something, and you can fail at some things, you uh, uh uh you need to realize that God works all things together for the good. Now, just because you failed a test that one time, don't mean you can't go back and take the test again. Just because you didn't do, just because you didn't accomplish what the Lord God gave you to accomplish this time, don't mean you have to keep on uh, uh falling short of what God is sending you to do. What He uh, of 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 obeying the instructions that He get that He is. He has given you. Jesus prayed for us for a reason, because he know that we need some help. That's why he left the Holy Spirit with us, so that we could have some help. Um, listen to this right here. The world is going to be against you. Jesus say, even in this John chapter 17, Jesus say, I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for those who you gave me. How about that? Jesus say he ain't praying for those. He pray. That prayer right there was specifically designed for someone else. It was for himself, for his disciples who were walking with him, and for those who would believe because of his disciples' word and testimony and what they preached and teached. That's who Jesus prayed for in the John in the whole chapter of John 17. And so he said, I'm not praying for the world. You know what I'm saying? He he made a distinguishment. He's praying that you keep, he, he praying the Father keep us out of the world. <clears throat> you know, I mean, that the Father will keep us safe in the world, not take us out of the world, but keep us safe in the world. See, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. We are of the Lord. Now, that, them two little words, in and of, mean a lot. And you can, they make a whole doctrine out of it. But we do live in the world. You live in, you're right here on the earth. You're living in, you're living in, 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 in North America. You're in North America is on the earth, it's in the world. Unless you're living in a different, a different continent. 
You could be. I had to say North America because there are people who be on here. They, I don't think they're from the United States. I see people, foreign names and stuff, and I don't think they're from the United States. But anyway, uh, I think you're in North America, or maybe on another continent, but you're still in the world. And Jesus is not praying that you should be taken out of the world because of all the pain and the torture and the sin and the and the hardship that you must deal with. But you're just praying that you're not overcome by the evil one, that you the evil one does not take you. He doesn't get you. He doesn't get you in the his his crosshairs, his his range and pull you over to his side. That's what Jesus does not want, that the enemy will get you and cause you to be lost like uh like the son of perdition. The world is going to be against you. Don't be like the world. You live in the world, but don't be like the world, the people in the world. The evil spirits are going to be against you. This man, oh Lord. This morning I'm I'm on the floor praying, man. And I, Lord, help me. This is not the first time. Not all, it's, this don't happen all the time. But when I feel like I'm going through something, then I want to tell God about it. But I don't want the evil spirits to hear it so they can know what to focus on. You know, I don't want them to, yeah, we got it when we got a weak point on them. We got a, we got a, we got a, we got a point where he's weak at. Let's, let's attack right here more. And so I, I wasn't praying out loud. I was saying some things out loud, but I was intentionally not saying the things that I was struggling with out loud. I was saying those in my heart, talking to God in my heart while I was on the floor praying. Some of it was audible and some of it was 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 inaudible. Because I, I don't I don't want the evil spirit to hear what I'm struggling with. They're there, they're listening. They're not omnipotent. They're not unpresent. They're not omniscient like God, but they're all around. It's spiritual warfare. You can't see the evil spirits. You, you can't see them. You know what I'm saying? You can't see the, the 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 Holy Spirit. You can't see the good spirits and the angels around you. There are angels around you. We call other we call evil spirits demons. You call them demons or evil spirits. There are angels and spirits around you. There are demons and evil spirits around. There are angels and good spirits and, and bad spirits and demons. All these things are around you, but you can't physically see them. You know, sometimes we think we can see them inside of a person, inside of people doing, causing them to do something. But I know that they're listening and they're watching and they want me to be defeated. They want you to be defeated. They want us to be defeated. And so I'm not, but I'm not encouraging you to be like that. Uh, that's not, I'm not telling you to, to be quiet when you're praying. Speak boldly. Speak boldly. Speak speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Talk to God. Tell him what's going on. Feel safe and secure in his presence. See, that was a that was a weak point for me. See, that's a uh, that was a weak point for me. I'm trying to hold back these tears. That was that was a point where I felt like I was struggling. I felt like I like Lord, look, man, I don't even know what to do, man. I'm struggling, God. I don't want to be like this, man. I, you know, I was telling them. I said, God, these things in my mind, in my heart, in my life, these things here are are, are consuming me. These things are are getting the best of me. They're uh, looks like they're defeating me. Defeat. <laughs> Jesus here talking about praying that you won't that the evil one feel like you know what I'm saying. Losing a grip or slipping away in certain areas, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna mention them. But just pray for me. I'm, Jesus prayed for me. <laughs> you pray for me. I'm gonna pray for me too. And um, uh, and so don't be like that. Let's, let's operate in fear. See, now I'm telling you a weakness and a flaw. You get the raw. You get the rawness on here because I can't see who's watching. I ain't looking at the screen on who's watching, who's listening, and I don't go and check later on. I don't think I do. Look, do I? How can I? I can see who like who react to it, but I can't really tell who watching. I never go and look at that and try to figure it out. But I can tell who reacting to it, to the live to my morning cup of Jesus. But that's a weakness. That's a flaw. That's a stronghold. It's got to be torn down. Operating in fear, to where you don't want. So you so you scared that you don't want the enemy hearing what you're praying about. Don't do it. Don't be like me in that area. See, the, everything I do ain't good. 
And I don't think that's a good thing right there, operating in fear of what, but operating in defeat. You're feeling, feeling like you're struggling, but I know everybody get down sometimes. Feel like, man, it's, it's rough, Lord. I need help. And so it was just one of those times where I felt like it's rough, God. I don't know what to do. You know what's going on in my life, in my heart, in my mind. You know what's going on in everything. You know what's going on in my marriage, my finances, my relationships, my my work. You know what's going on, Lord. Everything. God knows everything that's going on everywhere. And there are some things that I need him to help me with. You know well, he knows my thoughts, my emotions, my intentions, all that stuff. Dreams, desires, visions. God knows all of these things. He knows all these things about you too. But you got to take it to him in prayer. Take it to God in prayer and tell him what's on your heart. And uh, Philippians chapter 4. Uh, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. But in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, by prayer, in prayer and supplication, petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Tell him what's on your heart, on your mind, and your spirit and soul. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, start at verse 6. And it tells you to think about the lovely things, the pure things, the just things, the holy things, the righteous things. I'm paraphrasing. Think on those things. And don't think about what somebody did wrong to you. I tell you this because the Lord tells me to tell you this. <clears throat> the Lord telling me the same thing. But sometimes it's hard to forget about what people have done wrong to us. And we harvest revenge in our hearts. We want to pay them back. We want to say something back. We want to get them back. We want to go and do something. We might want to go and set a trap for them. Might want to, might want to uh, tell somebody else about what they did. Might want to turn somebody else against them. You know what I'm saying? Might want to say, look at what he did. Ain't he wrong for that? Look at what she did. Ain't she wrong for that? Look at what they doing. Ain't they wrong for that? You might, we might just want somebody to, uh, uh, to, 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 to to team up with how you feel and go against them, you know, because of what somebody simply did to you or said to you or what they didn't do or say or how they treated you, you know. And so it's a struggle. It's often a struggle, man. It's often a struggle. And that's, and that's a thing. That's a thing in the lives of believers, you know what I'm saying, just – uh. Just dealing with people, and I and and it, it just dealing with people. You know what I'm saying? You gotta deal with people. You gotta be in this world with these people, and you gotta be in the world with sin and transgression, ungodliness, and people who hate Jesus. See, I didn't, I didn't read all the scripture here, but read the whole John chapter 17. Cause see, now that I mentioned this, I probably should have backed up a little further. I think it started at verse six, but six to 17 was the verses. But I didn't read that. I just read 14 to 20. But Jesus said, they're going to hate you. In John chapter 17, he said, they're going to hate you where, where you're not of the world and they're not of me and they're going to hate you. They, Jesus said they hate me. They're going to hate you, the world. And so the, the spirits are going to be against you. The world is going to be against you. And even some of your friends and family will be against you. Even some of your friends and family are going to be against you as well. But you must endure. Realize that you are in Christ and your life is in him. Your life is hidden with Christ. Your life is not in this world. This is a temporary thing. If you're in Christ Jesus, if you are saved by Christ Jesus' blood, by his by his grace, by the by the by the by your faith that he's given you, if you are saved by his grace through your faith. Your life is hidden with Christ there. You live with Christ and you don't live in the world with these, you don't, you don't, you're not of the world. You don't live with these people. You just here physically, temporarily. But sin is going to remain here until the end of your life. You must endure. Realize that you are in Christ and your life is in him. Be more like Christ Jesus. Uh, kingdom minded. Seeking uh, the will of God. Seeking the will of God. 
trying to do whatever pleases the Father. Jesus says in Luke chapter 2, Didn't you know what I must be about my Father's business? Seek the will of God. Be about your Father's business. Be more kingdom-minded. Be more like Christ. If you think about what Jesus, how he endured all that stuff. He wasn't worked up about what them, how them folks treated him, what they did to him, what they said to him. He said, Father, forgive them. If he said, Father, forgive them, he forgave them too. And you can forgive them, and I can forgive them, and we can forgive them, no matter what takes place. We just got to ask God to give us a heart of forgiveness, give us a heart of compassion, give us a heart of mercy, take away any type of vengeance or violence or wrath or payback or any, any of that stuff. Out of our hearts. Take it away. We got to ask God to do it. He'll do it. I see sin, sin offends me. I know I'm talking about it. They're probably like, hey, well, who did something to you? Sin offends me. Sin offends me. Sin. I hate sin. I really do. No matter who committed If I committed it, I hate it. So when there's sin going on in my mind, my heart, in my hands, my mouth, when there's sin taking place, I hate what I'm doing. Bottom line, if you're doing, you're doing it, I hate your sin too. And so, let's remain kingdom minded, be more like Jesus Christ, seeking the will of God until the day that the Lord brings all your work to a completion. Because there is going to be a, a day he's going to bring all your work to a completion. Now, he who began a good work in you is going to complete it. That's your work of salvation. But he's going to bring all your work to a completion as well. Then he's going to tell you that he is proud of you. He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You just continue on doing what you're doing for the Lord. I got to tell you this, and this is still resonating with me from a few weeks, a few days ago. Uh, don't worry about what, uh, don't worry about anybody else's walk with the Lord. Don't worry about it. Be, be, be concerned about your walk with the Lord. You can't, uh, you can't dictate what they do in the Lord. You can try to tell them, but you'll even get worked up trying to tell them. If you're like me, you try to tell somebody what's right, and they want to tell you that it's, that it's, that it's wrong, you, you get all worked up about that. So don't worry about what other people are doing in the Lord, how they why they're walking with the Lord, or how they're walking in this life. You just be concerned about what you're doing in the Lord and what you're doing in this life and what the Lord has you doing. And um, you seek to please God, whether or not, they please whether they please in God or not. You just do your part, and all the rest of the stuff will just fall into place. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God, and He shall direct your path. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, God. Thank you, God, that uh, you always got something good for us, Lord. Help us, God, to trust in you with all our heart. Help us, God to not lean on our own understanding or our own way of thinking. Help us, God, to acknowledge you in all our ways, Lord God. And help us, God, to see the path that you're ordering us on, that you're directing us on. Let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, Lord God, that we may see. Hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for those who are struggling with anything, God. Anything that they're trying to overcome for your for for your kingdom, God. Anything that they're trying to overcome, and it's for the good, and it's for righteousness, it's for holiness, it's for for Jesus. They feel like it's wrong, it's sinful. Anything and everything that they're trying to overcome, Lord God, for your sake, I pray, God, that you would help them to overcome. I pray, God, you would give them strength to overcome, that you would give them help to overcome, that you would give them people to overcome, Lord, help them overcome it. I pray you would give them the power to overcome it. I pray, God, you would give them the willingness and the mind to overcome those things, Lord God. And I pray for myself that you would help me to overcome the things that I struggle with too, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. <clears throat> All right. 
Okay, that's it for Morning Cup of Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Oh, mm -hmm.